This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by writer, director, and probably other jobs along the way, uh, Elizabeth Chomko uh, from What They Had, um, which is a story about a family dealing with a aging relative who has Alzheimer's, I believe, was it? Not just dementia. Um, memory loss. We don't specify, but yes. Some sort of memory loss situation. Late stage memory um, loss, yes. As somebody who's dealt with that situation, it definitely resonated with me. And I was kind of curious, what was sort of like the genesis for you of the idea, of the story? What was sort of like the inspiration for it? Um, I wrote the screenplay from a very personal place inspired by my family and the kind of things that we encountered in coping with my grandmother's Alzheimer's diagnosis. I relate to that, yes. Yes. She um, had the disease for 17 years. Wow. Just recently passed away wow. a couple Sorry months ago. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, and just about, you know, what that kind of grief is and capturing the challenges that we encountered in her caregiving, but also the ways in which we cope with that, including how loudly we laughed as our hearts were breaking. Yeah. Um, and I think it was really like my observation of her beginning to lose her memory that I started to realize how precious they are and how I had been taking them for granted. Our memories are this gift and whether or not we're diagnosed with any sort of memory loss disease, we're all losing our memories. They're all sort of slipping. I feel like I'm losing quite a few. Yeah. So it's a real challenge. And this was a memory this time in my life and these people, and I just didn't want to ever lose that. And so I, this was like my way of controlling, <laughs> controlling time and memory loss. And One of the interesting things to me um, about that is that, I mean, there are a variety of characters, the father, the children, grandchild. How did you go about um, making sure that nobody was, you know, a quote unquote villain? Because it feels like it could be really easy to be like, oh, this person's perspective of how they resolve this situation is completely the wrong one, or this person's like the hero and blah, blah, blah. But you sort of made everyone exist in not a gray area, but just like everyone had solutions to a problem and none of them were maybe more right than the others. Yeah. Well, the film takes place in Chicago, which is where I grew up. And I think there's a Midwestern morality um, it, that my grandfather had. Maybe it's an older generational thing where it's like, you know, you kind of, it's very clear what, you know, what, what, what your loyalties are. It's like to your, to, your, to, to your family, to God, and to your parish. You know, you don't ask questions and you just put your head down and do the right thing. And that's all well and good until a situation arises where there really is no right thing. And that's what caregiving is. Like, that's what this situation is. There's really no ideal way to cope with this and there's no there's no perfect solution and we don't know what the right answer is so um, I just think the only antagonist in the situation is time uh, and everyone's trying to do their best by them and trying to act out of that place of love it's just you know it's just the situation is impossible and I think a lot of people struggle with that when they get to that point where they have to parent their parents and are suddenly co-parenting with their siblings who they never really got along with or you know and um it this just these caregiving challenges were just kind of unequipped for them and it's not something that we like to talk about before they occur so i just wanted to be um you know loyal to that those those premises and I think and it's similarly, real. Similarly, without going to specifics, because I want to make sure people go see the film um, without being spoiled, but how challenging is it to sort of then sort of wrap up a story like this in some sort of manner that, I mean, is satisfactory because it's such a, like, a, a complex issue that there's no, like, this is the solution, yay, everyone got there. Uh, I mean, there's probably a million different ways this film could have ended. How did yeah. you sort of determine, ultimately, this is the way I want it to end? That's a good question. Um, I think what I was really interested in is, like, psychology, family dynamics, human behavior, people, characters, that and I kind of gave it a simple premise so that I could then make all these things very complicated and complex and really dive do a deep dive on these long relationships families but in terms of the way it ended um, 
without giving anything away. I think it's just everybody doing what they think is the right thing. And, um, you know, my own personal family situation, it ended in a similar manner as this, mm. as the way it does in the film. So, and that was one of the things that prompted me to say, oh my gosh, like I, this is something I need to write this moment and this thing, so. But, yeah, it was a long process writing the script. You know, I wrote the first draft very quickly, like in a few days, and there are pieces that are still there from that draft. The structure is there and characters are there, but it's all very sketchy. Hmm. And it took many, many rewrites to really develop the characters and the relationships and, you know, um, and tie it up the way that it's tied up and et cetera, so. Very cool. Yeah. And I know you have a background in acting. Was writing and directing something that you had always planned to do? Was this something that you got like inspired to, into? And with all that considered, how did your experience with acting influence the way you went about writing and directing this film? Well, I was always an actor. I was also a writer. I was a playwright, I, and I had been journaling all my life. Like, and writing for me was always very private. It was always like something that I did to figure out stuff and when I was lonely and it just was like this method of working out answering questions that mm -hmm. I didn't have answers oh, yeah. to and then this but this I never really I've never thought about being a filmmaker really certainly not a director and but I this this inspiration for this movie hit me and it was like this is a movie and someone's gonna make it and I honestly didn't think it was gonna be me at the time because I just didn't feel like I didn't look like any of the directors that I knew I had grown up watching Anna Green Gables and, you know, and Julie Andrews and the filmmakers I knew were all men who grew up watching Brian De Palma and, you know, Charles Bronson. So, uh, but then I sort of was like, well, maybe this is, means that I should and not that I shouldn't. And, and I had a very clear vision. So I just wrote the script and continued writing it. And, and it was really about the process of, of the creative process of doing it. Not so much about being here, but about that. And I think as a as an actor, I think you you I think it helps you certainly write empathetic characters. I think you can't mm. step into a, a character as an actor unless you really care about them and interesting you know and really like uh, empathize yeah. and or don't judge them. Yeah. And I think you've got to do the same with your your writing when you're writing characters. They're like your children, and you kind of have to love them all equally. I think, and uh, and then certainly as a director being an actor helped tremendously to be able to you know understand these guys and what well, they that, didn't that need sort of makes an interesting question of itself of like the reverse now that you've directed this has it changed the mindset that you will approach acting roles as assuming you want to go back to acting and don't want to just focus on directing or something like that has it changed the way you're like oh now i understand why that person did x y and z when they were talking to me or oh now i understand you know why we do this then the other definitely experience behind the camera helps to understand what it is to be in front of it but with that said like I never felt quite at home in front of the camera. Interesting. And I didn't know why, and I, but I, I felt tremendously at home behind it. And oh, that's awesome. What I loved about being an actor, I got to feel that same feeling when I was sort of watching them mm. step into these emotions, kind of riding it along with them. Interesting. Um, and I got to do it with all of these characters and in a beautiful way. Um, so I, I don't, I, I never say never, right? But uh, it, this is, this, this is, is the change. where I feel like, yeah. I, yeah, I finally understand where I belong. Very cool. <laughs> Um, the film has a phenomenal cast. I mean, Hilary Swank, Michael Shannon, like just Thank everybody you. in this cast is pretty remarkable. Yes. Um, it seems like, from my perspective as like a non-director, that it's sort of like awesome and sort of terrifying at the same time because oh, you're yeah. like, okay, Hillary, I know you've won two Academy Awards, but like this is what I want. So like, yeah. how challenging is that as like a first time director to be like, okay, I have a very clear vision. I have a very talented cast. How do you sort of approach the challenge of being like, this is, this is how it's going to be? 
Um, well, they all came. Uh, they all came aboard at various stages. Like Hillary came aboard first and very bravely. And she and I did some. T- she and I did some. She really inspired some forward motion on the screenplay. Like this character that she plays. I think is the most me, and as a result mm. is sort of the biggest enigma for me <laughs> to write, and she was this woman that I had been trying to conjure suddenly in front of me, and having her a- along and becoming a muse was really wonderful to push the script that extra 5, 10, 15, 20%. Um, and then the other cast came aboard relatively quickly and was was true to what was already on the page, and I had spent so much time developing the script and really kind of fleshing out as much of it as I could in terms of the vision and just the dynamic between them and this cast was all perfect they were all perfect I mean I couldn't have I could not have like dreamed of a better of a better group of folks and so when you have a cast that's this perfectly cast and then this good there's really not much to the job (laughs) you just kind of sit and you know you just watch and pinch (laughs) yourself and like try not to breathe too hard because you might screw it up how, um, how weirdly, um, I don't know what it would be, therapeutic, confusing, like you're literally watching sort of a version of your life being reenacted in front of you about sort of things that were inspired by your life. How sort of like surreal or therapeutic or fascinating is that sort of experience of being able to sort of watch your life from an exterior position? It's amazing. Really. It's it's. It was really like one of the most spiritual and profound moments of my entire life to be able to see us all become a family. Me take this thing that was inspired by my family and then my own weird mind and and give it to them and allow them and how easily they all just stepped onto set without rehearsals in 22 days and wow. felt like a family Oof. on the very first day. Just got it. Um, and now we're all very, cl- cl- like now we get back together and it's like we're still, it's very Start spiritual. working on the sequel. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the sequel would look like, but um, what they still I'm have, sure someone what they will, wanna, will have. Yeah, some, what, some they, other, like, what they had next. Have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. That's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, um, thank you. Now that you've completed this, now that you're inspired to work on more projects, what is your sort of thought process going forward? Are you going to try and step into like more things that you're inspired by from life? Or are you going to try and get more sort of out? I don't know. Like, do you want to make like transformer type movies? Do you want to make thriller movies? Do you want to make horror movies? Like what exactly is it like now that you've sort of got this under your belt that like, if I could do anything, I would love to do this. Well, I think I learned a lot um, in making this film, that, about, and I learned a lot, and I learned a lot about the things that I didn't know anything about yet. And of course, I look at this film, and while I'm incredibly proud of, of it, I also look at it and see all the things that I would have done differently if I knew then. You know, you always do, and, yeah. I, and just the things that I can't wait to go and do better. And so, um, and I just love being challenged by those types of things. So, I, you know, I'd love to make something that's more. Um, poetic from a cin- hmm. from a, a cinematic place, visual place, like a Terrence Malicky kind of thing, something like that. Yeah, like just something that, you know, where the where the focus is a little more. I, we just didn't have the time. This is a movie about people and the dialogue. The, mm. If we didn't have those those di- that dynamic, those dialogue scenes, and we didn't have a movie. So that was our focus. It was always about the people and the emotions and the relationships. But to story tell. Um, visually, uh, you know, and just see what that feels like. Me as a playwright, this was kind of more of an obvious jump, but now, you know, knowing more about cinematic storytelling, I just like to kind of experiment with that a bit more. Um, I don't really want to do another, you know, disease movie. You don't want to become the disease filmmaker? No, I just, I, you know, I really loved working with all of these actors and would love to work with all of them more and, and continue to be challenged and I, but I think the main thing is like there's a there's something in your soul that while I don't know that I'll ever make something that's quite this personal again, making something personal in that it feels personal in some way, I can't imagine doing it without it. Well, I guess the question that goes along with that is like, are you interested in 
just work on things that you write? Or are you open to things that are other people's creations? Because that's sort of one of those real separating points in terms of the personal touch, I guess. Yeah. I'm open. I'm open. I love to write and will continue to write. And, um, and, and I like collaborating. So, you know, the possibility of writing with another writer, I'm open to that. I'm open to taking a script that feels close to being ready to shoot and directing that. It just, you know, it's like, it's a very instinctual, like, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see. One of the interesting things you keep talking about is uh, your experience as a playwright. Is that something like working in the theater that would be of interest to you as well? Like, oh. I mean, I don't know. I can't even imagine how complicated changing that sort of direction would be. To no, like I, I, yeah, my theater was my way into everything, really. So I would, I, I miss the theater and I miss acting in the theater. I miss, you know, play. there's something, it's a totally different art form and, but that's really, my home in, in a way so yeah wow. okay well maybe maybe another alternative then maybe, as well maybe, maybe we'll make this as a traveling musical uh, actually i, I guess, I that, guess I, does allow that, that i'm excited like, by always trying to correct those challenges or whatever those little things that people become fixated on so that could potentially work there but yeah. there's probably a million other things that come up each performance that you're like ah, oh, we fixed that one thing yeah that's the beauty of it the spontaneity the yeah, that energy is That's cool. True. Yeah. Very cool. So the film is What They Had. It comes out October... October... November 2nd. November 2nd, 2nd in Seattle. Okay. October 9th, 19th. 19th. In, in LA and New York. Okay. And November 2nd here in Seattle. Very cool. Um, well, I, I enjoy this. I can't wait to see what people have to say about it when they get to see it. And Thank I you. wish you the best of luck and can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.